everyone. Um, see that there are new attendees arriving. Um, we'll give it a few more minutes before we start in earnest. Um, currently, we've got about 34 people here, so we'll just wait until about 4.02, 4.03, um, and then we'll, we'll just kind of dive into it. So thank you all for, for taking the time today. Well, hello and, and welcome to Let's Talk Mental Health in Times of Crisis, brought to you by the Hemophilia Federation of America. I'm Eric Ferguson, the Blood Brotherhood Program Coordinator here at HFA. Also on the line, we have Gary McLean, PhD, as well as Carrie Koenig, HFA's Program Director. Before we get started, we would like to take a moment to thank our 2020 HFA Program funders, as listed on the next slide. Without their generous donations, this webinar and much of what HFA does would not be possible. Before we get started, I would like to note that while Gary and I will be able to speak due to the large attendance of this webinar, all attendees are currently muted. In your interface should be an option to send text questions. Please submit questions as they arise, as this is an interactive session, and we will do our best to relay them to Gary in a timely manner. If we are unable to forward them to Gary during the presentation, there will be time at the end for Q&A. Today's presentation is Let's Talk Mental Health in Times of Crisis. We have an extremely knowledgeable speaker, Dr. Gary McLean, with us. Gary is a therapist, writer, and educator, specializing in helping clients deal with the emotional impact of chronic health conditions, as well as their families and professional caregivers. He works with them to understand and cope with their emotions, to learn about their lifestyle and treatment options, to maintain adherence with medical, reg medical regimens, to communicate effectively with their family members, in the medical establishment and to listen to their own inner voice as they make decisions about the future. He has done a lot of work with the bleeding, bleeding disorders community as a therapist and as a speaker at family camps, local meetings, and most recently at NHF, or I'm sorry, HFA's uh, National Conference. He has a website, justgotdiagnosed.com. So as we go to the next slide, we just wanted to remind everyone that uh, this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be construed as medical advice or the official opinion position of HFA, its staff, or its board of directors. Attendees are strongly encouraged to discuss their own medical treatment with their healthcare providers. And with that, I'd love to hand it off to Gary. So thank you so much, Dr. McLean. Hi there. It's really uh, it's it's nice to be here. It's it's really great to have this opportunity to to talk to you. So I'm going to start by again saying hi. And um, you know we live in um, there's some words that I'm hearing a lot that I'm uh, getting maybe too familiar with. One is unprecedented. This is an unprecedented time, and I'm uh, I've been around many years. I've never dealt with anything like this as I as I know none of you have either and you know some of the other words we're hearing um you know hunker down and petri dish and i know there's one 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 word after another that are that are uh, i haven't become uh, immune to you, that each time i hear them they 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 cause me to, to think and and uh to and to and to wonder what what i need to be doing so i think you you may be feeling the same way I uh, am feeling a lot of phone calls from clients and other organizations that I work with from people who are just worried, you know, they're having a few little little um, symptoms here and there, and then they're wondering, is this something worse? And, and it also seems like our doctors are maybe a step or two ahead, but uh, you know, we're not always sure they're, you know, that we're all in learning mode here. And I think we're, for better or worse, we're figuring this out as we go along. We have some very, very smart people at the CDC and local health departments, World Health Organization. We have a lot of very smart people who are on the case. And um, 
you know, they're keeping us informed as well as they can. And, and I think you're also probably experiencing the same thing as I am, what, you know, what next in terms of restrictions. And, and uh, you know, there's, there, there's useful information, though it's unfolding day to day. And there's a lot of fear mongering and there's a lot of worst case scenarios. And I think we're all trying to sort through that. So I think it's just, uh, again, a very difficult time that we're, that we're in right now. So I think, um, you know, this is a time to, uh, to, to get as informed as possible and, and to, and to support each other. So I'm really, again, glad you're here and I hope that I can give you some information also. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about psychology, which is flight or fight, and something that you might have had in, in uh, high school psychology or if you took it in college. We'll talk about that briefly. I'm not going to give you a lot of psychobabble and theory and all of that, I promise you. And this is all going to lead into a discussion of uh, resilience and experiencing flight or fight and, and tools that you can actually um, Use. So I'm, I'm hoping that you will find that this is a practical um, experience for you, that you're actually going to walk out of here with some useful information. And I will be kind of tailoring this as we go along. I will tailor it to the um, situation that we're in now to, uh, again, to keep it as, as relevant as I can. So ju just, just so you know. Um, and I will try very hard to leave a few minutes at the end as well. I'm a very, a very time conscious person and uh, I will leave some time at the end also that we can hopefully address questions as well. I'm going to leave my Gary. email address. Yeah. Gary, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm getting some um, yeah. comments about how there is no sound right now. Um, if oh, no. um, people are having trouble with um, audio, please um, uh, send questions to me. Um, I will also send out um, in just a second uh, a link to dial in. So if it's not working through your computer, please check um, the chat. I will send a link to dial in there. Um, so uh, please do continue, Gary. Okay. We're getting a lot, of, Sorry getting about a lot that. of messages now that uh, people can hear. So uh, I'll still send that out just in case. Oh, no. Okay. It's, it's nothing on my end, right? No, no, not at all. It's just, no. Okay, great. Okay. Good, good. Okay, good. I want to make sure I didn't have a mute button pushed or something. Okay, good. Well, I'm sorry about that. You know, I think I was going to mention that we're, uh, we're all being kind of pulled into the 21st century, I think, in this 21st century, I think, in this experience, we're learning how to use tools that we maybe haven't used before. And, and I think that the tools that we do have um, are, um, you know, are being stretched to the limit as well. So we're, you know, we're, again, we're all feeling this as kind of dealing with this as we go along step by step. So just to ask you to, tend to maybe spend just five, five or ten seconds kind of just consciously relaxing. I'm, I, I think we're all, again, a little on the stressed outside. And just take a moment and kind of think about a laser beam uh, going through you from starting at your head and kind of very gradually down through your neck, your chest down through your arms, your legs, and just kind of gradually relaxing yourself. And I just want us all to, as much as possible, I know realistically it's not easy, um, as much as possible to kind of relax and sort of be open to the information and maybe use this as a, as a um, you know, as an hour, even a break in your day, even though it's informational, a break from the, from, from the whatever activities you're, you're in, involved in. I'm going to ask a few questions. When is the last time you felt like you were on the edge? And you might answer that 10 minutes ago. What I'm finding right now is that people are on the edge. And I had a talk with someone about a couple of hours ago, and she was saying that, that uh, she's working at home, her husband's working at home, and they're suddenly finding out that they're on edge with each other. And, and I said, yes, we're all on edge. And this is making us all stressed out. And it's causing us to be a little temperamental with each other and a little quick. So that's something just to be aware of, and we'll, we'll talk about that. People are feeling back into a corner, feeling a little bit trapped. Literally, they're feeling trapped at home and, and trapped in their neighborhoods and trapped and not being able to go out and do things they enjoy doing. That's bringing up a lot of feelings, which we'll, we'll talk about in a few minutes. 
And, and, and as you think about how to react, you know, what's your, what's your first instinct? And, you know, what is that? Is it to yell? Is it to run for the hills? Is it to sit down and cry? All of those would be, all of those would be, would be valid, I would say. Again, this is a, a, a difficult time, and I'm going to say that repeatedly. This is a difficult time that we're in, and we're all doing the best we can. We're all figuring this out step by step. So I'm going to talk a little bit about flight or fight. Again, I'm going to spin through these slides. I, I want to focus more on what's on the practical information, but I just want to give you some background to give you some insight into how you might be feeling and, and also to give you some reassurance that whatever you're feeling is probably normal. We might have different ways of, we're, of we're experiencing this, reacting, but it's all, it's all kind of normal. So you might remember from Psych 101 that the basic reactions to stress are flight or fight. And these reactions were hardwired before humans even had a language. You know, there was a, uh, you know, if, if you go to the Museum of Modern uh, or Ancient History or whatever in your, in your town, uh, in your area, uh, you might have seen a, uh, pictures or, a, you know, dinosaur bones, whatever. And flight or flight was a reaction to, you know, yikes, there's a Tyrannosaurus rex headed our way. What, what am I going to do? So really the fight or fight is genetic. It's genetic wisdom that um, helps us to react. It's, 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 it's wired into us. It's unconscious. But stressful situations bring out the flight or fight, and that's what I really want to, to emphasize here. Um, sometimes flight or fight can be a reaction to, to mental illness, can be a, um, part of mental illness. Sometimes people have anxiety disorders. And um, still I see clients that have various kinds of anxiety. And uh, this is, you know, where the anxiety is kind of hardwired. Or their children may be ADHD, um, you know, conduct, oppositional problems. So some of this can be the, the result of mental illness as well. But I'm going to just keep that separate because what I'm focused on today, and you may have had some diagnoses of your own in your own family. The reason I'm throwing this up here is that this is separate. The kind of anxiety we're talking about today is normal, your own flight or fight response. I want to just emphasize that. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into science and brain chemistry, but we do have a sympathetic nervous system. There's a release of adrenaline, which I'm sure you've heard of, and norepinephrine. So when you see a stimulus like the latest news report, that's what's called, in psychology, we call that a stimulus. It's something that you read or you see, you hear about, and you react to it, and you get a chemical reaction to it. And that's really what I want to emphasize here. When you're in flight or fight, your respiratory rate increases. And I've had people tell me they read the news and they start, they feel their heartbeat increasing just from hearing the news or seeing the, the local mayor or the president or their governor get on TV. All automatically they start feeling some of that flight or fight. And I have felt mm. some of this myself. Our, you know, our mayor got on the news and, and automatically I felt myself getting nervous because I, I didn't, I didn't know what he was going to say next and what restrictions. So I think you might be feeling this way. We become more aware. And flight or fight is about being aware so that you can react to stress. Um, scientifically, your sight gets uh, sharpened. Your impulse, you're, re you're ready to move. If you're in pain, you might not feel it at the moment. So you've seen these TV shows where the guy gets shot and he stays in the fight because he doesn't feel the pain. Uh, you know, he's in flight or fight. So you prepare. You start looking for the enemy. And here's the problem, and I'm going to talk about that, that we start seeing everything as a potential enemy. We start mobilizing, and that's where the stress, where the stress kicks in. You might start to see everything as a threat to your survival. And I'm hearing that from clients right now. They're worried about the condition itself, the coronavirus. They're also worried about what restriction. How am I going to be uh, limited? What's this going to mean for my income? We're seeing everything as a potential threat. So what I'm finding interesting is that not only are we worried about coronavirus, we're scared about the um, restrictions. We're scared about the reaction that our government is, is having to take. We're scared about everything. I'm scared about the protections in place. I'm scared about the, 
the condition of Trump, and that's what I just want to, to emphasize. So flight or fight moves us into attack. Everything starts to seem like a threat. The, 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 the solution and the, the, the condition, everything feels like a threat. We, we start to overreact. We, everything gets kind of muddled or turned into mud, as I call it. It's hard to stay positive when you're stuck feeling like you're in survival mode. And I'm sure that you've heard, had the same conversations. Are we going to be restricted from going to work? Some of you might already be. Um, what else, what other services in my neighborhood will shut down? Am I going to be short on groceries? What, you know, what will Medicaid, and we're hearing one thing after another. So we're just being barraged with worst, you know, worst possible scenarios. So it's hard to make you know, clear choices. You want to the HSA webinar? Mm -hmm. What? Can you put, I'm, I'm sorry. Please continue, Gary. If you have a question, please pass that question along through the question box or the chat. We're fearing, we're fearing that they're hiding, you know, we're also fearing that they're hiding in the corners as well. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're all scared right now. This can lead to burnout over time where you're just exhausted. And that's what I'm, I'm hearing in, in some of my clients. They're reaching the exhaustion phase where they just don't know how to, how to react anymore. So, you know, flight or fight can have an upside. Nature gave that's to protect us from wild animals. Don't stand there, do something. You're in the middle of a, a four lanes of traffic and the red the light just turned green. Fight or fight says get moving. And firefighters, the police and ferocious parents who have children uh, that they need to protect, the flight or fight helps you to move. So behind every hero is flight or fight. But keep in mind we don't have dinosaurs anymore. And we tend to use flight or fight in a way that we don't need to, like heavy traffic, flight or fight kicks in when you can't do anything anyway, or, you know, the guy behind the counter is slow when you're hungry. Flight or fight can kick in when it's not useful, and that's, that's the problem. And what I'm finding now is that a lot of my clients, they're stuck in flight or fight right now. They're on edge. They're not sleeping. They're not eating, or they're eating a lot. Their stress is just there. They're walking around with it there. They're getting headachey. They're not feeling well. Uh, they're lowering their immune system. They're feeling depressed, anxious. They're, you know, they're just walking around in self-defeat. And I'm fielding a lot of phone calls from clients who are just really feeling this right now. So pay attention to yourself when you follow, you know, be aware of your own stress, stress reactions. Also keep in mind, a lot of emotions come up in times like this. I'm hearing a lot of anger. Um, difficulty concentrating, people are working at home but they can't focus, depression, feeling helpless, sadness, fear, a lot of frustrations, um, other symptoms, you know, teeth grinding, people are, are just finding they're really reacting all over the place. So, so again, adopting flight or fight can also leave you stuck, stuck there. And don't forget freeze. We've been hearing a lot of freeze. I think a lot of us were in freeze when we first started hearing this news. We went into denial. I'm not going to think about this. It's going to go away. And I think many of us, and I'm guilty of this, some of this myself, of feeling like, you know, this can't be that bad. It can't get that bad. And then, and then we realize, yep, it's, it's, it's getting that bad. So a lot of us kind of froze for a while, too. We're all kind of thawing out, though. I think I, I certainly have. So let's talk about Mark Twain. I've experienced many terrible things in my life, a few of which actually happened. And I think we're in a situation now when we're, we're, we're thinking about what has happened, what hasn't, and we're, you know, we're, we're, we're in kind of wait, wait and see mode. So where, what are your coping skills right now on a scale of 1 to 10? I'm just asking you to think about that. You know, what are, you, what are your own strengths or weaknesses right now? So let's talk about resilience. I want to talk about some ideas that I'm hoping will, will, will help you. 
one, we, we all have some resilience built in. Some of us are a little more resilient than others. Some of us came from families where we learned to be resilient. Some of us didn't. But we all have a certain level of result, resilience. If you didn't have resilience, you wouldn't be sitting here today on this conversation. Resilient people say, what's available to me? How can I make use of it? You're here today. You're a resilient person. Congratulations. Well, let's talk about how to become more resilient, how to make, how to make use of it. Can learn uh, to cope even more effectively. So I'm, you know, I'm reminding people this can be a real, a real learning experience. So, you know, so let's talk about what we can do. And it all comes down to making a choice. And I say that to my clients all the time. You have a, you have a choice. So here's some tools to use. And while we're feeling some of this uh, flight or fight, I'm going to slow down just a little bit. And um, and as I talk, if you have a question, you know, please feel free to write it in or you know to post it, and uh, and we'll make sure either I'll get to it or we'll make sure that it, that it gets answered. This is this is your session. So Gary, we do I have one question left. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how should we handle stress and anxiety around social media and all of the information out there on COVID-19 trying to decide what's true, what's not. It's also overwhelming. Absolutely. Yeah, I will. Um, I'll, I'll, I will talk around that and get to that, but I, let me, let me just say, I think that's a very good question. I think, you know, we've come to rely on social media so much and, you know, social media is uh, is essentially a, it's a, what we used to call a vanity press, where you paid so much money and somebody published your book, and whether it was a factual, a publishable book, a publishable book or not, and you know, blogging, and a lot of social media is people throwing out their ideas. Sometimes they throw it out as facts, and you know what what I always tell people is go. You know, if you're reading social media and people are posting things that they've seen, whatever, you can say, well, okay, that's your experience. I'm sorry to hear that, and that's scary, and it's good to know, whatever, um, that you're experiencing this, and that's going on in your community, whatever. But I think that that go back to your own uh, local health department website to go to the, the CDC has a very nice coronavirus website. You can uh, Google um, CDC coronavirus. I did. And went to their site, very consumer friendly, latest and greatest information. Uh, your state, your probably has, maybe your city probably has um, the latest information. Certainly your state is telling you, your city is telling you what the guidance is for your neighborhood. So I say, you know, if you're reading this on social media, you're reading other people's experiences. They may be different than your own, and they may not be factual. They may be their own worst fear that they're presenting as, as reality, which it may not. And um, so I would say always go back to the vetted websites. Again, the CDC and um, your own state, your own county, city, and, and get get to the real information for your area. I think that's really what we, you know, just to remind you of that vetted information. But you know, I just I, I hope that helps, and I'll I'll read I'll cycle back to that too later on. But I just say when you're feeling this, especially, you know, last last night uh, or a couple of nights ago, the mayor was on and you know made the comment about in 48 hours I'll make a decision about lockdown. That's such a scary word. And, um, you know, automatically I felt myself getting anxious. And, you know, what I, what I, what I do for myself is, again, to, 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 to breathe. Don't hyperventilate, but to breathe. Just recognize your thoughts are automatic, but I don't have to follow them down the rabbit hole. You know, and it's natural to say what's the worst thing that can happen, but also recognize I don't know what, what that is. Obviously, I know that the worst thing that can happen is getting very sick and, and, and from this condition, but I also know there are a lot of things, a lot of things I can do to protect myself. I know there's a lot of information about the condition, how bad it can get, how bad it doesn't have to get. And I just remind myself, I need to be informed about this. And what I might be thinking is the worst thing in terms of restrictions, in terms of the effect may not be. And so... You know, I, I, I need to say, do I need to react to a crisis or I need, do I need to dial it, this down and say, I need more information? And that's what I remind myself. The information is not there. I need more information. 
I, I can react to what I do know. I can follow the guidelines, which I don't really enjoy. Um, but this will unfold. I can't get caught up in, in uh, the worst possible scenario because I don't know what that is or what the, what the possibility is. So, you know, I think answering that question for yourself and just being okay with I don't know yet is, I think, something that we all are having to get used to, We're just kind of calming ourselves down. These are scary thoughts we don't know yet. We have to take it one step at a time. And again, follow the guidelines. And there's a certain, certainly annoyance, but there's a certain comfort level in knowing I'm doing what I need to do. I don't like it, but I, I'm, I'm doing what I need to do. Also, I think there's, uh, I'm, I'm hearing people falling into a lot of self-criticism. You're saying, I must do this, I should, I shouldn't have done that, why did I do that? Um, you know, why, and, and, and just criticizing themselves and, and um, I think, I think we all need to recognize that we're doing the best I can. And I'm hearing people, part of the self-criticism is, is people saying, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I'm a parent. I should be brave. I shouldn't be getting angry about this. I shouldn't, whatever. There's, there's no should here. Feelings are just feelings. And I think, you know, we're all, we're, again, we're all fumbling through this. We're all figuring this out. And, and uh, tuning into the latest guidance. And I think we're going to run, run, through, run through a range of feelings. And I think, uh, you know, I think, I think don't judge yourself for the way that, that you're feeling about this because it's, uh, you know, it's uncharted territory. And I think wherever you can dial it down, I think is helpful. I mean, <clears throat> in some ways, this is a catastrophe. You know, we have a, we have a, you know, a pandemic potentially running rampant. It is, it is a catastrophe. I mean, I can't pretend it's not. But the other catastrophes that we may be creating are not, you know, may not be realistic. So I'm, I'm just saying don't create additional catastrophes for yourself. And, and um, you know, I'll give you an example. I, I um, go to an office and I work on site at a couple of corporations helping in the wellness center with uh, you know, troubled employees. And, um, you know, they both email, emailed me and said, you can't come into the office anymore. And, you know, I just, I mean, I, I felt like this is a catastrophe. They need me and I, ha I can't be there and I don't want to be stuck at home. I don't want to be stuck in my office. And I had to dial it down and say, look, this is necessary. You can't show up there. Deal with it. It's not a catastrophe. You have a telephone. People can talk to you on the telephone. And you'll work through it. I teach. And um, both universities contacted me and said, you can't come on campus anymore. You've got to move everything online. Catastrophe. This is impossible. I don't know how I'm going to do this. This is cheating students. Well, how, this can't happen. What, and, and, and then I had to calm myself down and say, you got to figure this out. You got to walk. You got to join the 21st century. You got to figure out how to do conferences like we're doing now. And you got to figure this out. This is not a catastrophe. Calm down. And I've had to constantly do that. And, um, you know, just constantly remind myself that it, it, it's the pits. I don't like it. But, again, it's not a catastrophe. And that's helped me to recognize I'm not in control. I've got to deal with it like everybody else is having to. Nothing special about me. i got to do it, too. We'll get through this. And I'm seeing... You know, I'm looking for where is the cup half full. You know, I'm, I'm learning new technology. My students are already three steps ahead of me anyway. So this is nothing new to them. And, um, you know, I don't have a long commute some days, so I'm getting more sleep. I'm finding, you know, I'm getting more rest at home. I'm, I'm rediscovering my apartment. I'm not coming home at 11 o'clock from too many clients and staying too late to do paperwork. I'm living my life differently. And, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's going to be an upside to this. Somewhere I'm going to find a silver lining, and I hope you're able to do that too. I, been, I've talked to a couple of clients that said, um, you know, uh, said my wife and I are both home with the kids. We're rediscovering our children. We're doing things. We're playing games together as a family. We're teaching the kids how to, how, how to play cards. Um, we play charades together. Um, 
my my wife works for a while while I play with the kids, and then I work while she, I play with the kids while she works. We're uh, you know we're making lunch together. We're finding ways to be a family that we haven't ever been before. And um, you know I had a client say, you know I I'm not happy about this, but my family has learned to be a family in ways that we've never been a family before. And, and it's by recognizing, you know, what's the where's the lesson? What can I do to to make the best of this? And I you know I would I would I would encourage you. You're probably most of you are probably three steps ahead of me on this, but. You know, I think I think this is how we'll this is how we'll grow from this. <clears throat> also, reframe. You know, is there another way to look at this? And I think I just kind of did this for you. You know, is this the time to again reconnect with family? Is this the time to learn how to use technology better? Is this the time to learn how to be more independent and not rely on my coworkers? Is this the time to get a little bit more rest? Is this a time to learn how to how to cook together and make interesting meals since we can't go to restaurants? You know, what whatever it is, is there a, you know, in in one frame, it's the pits. You know, my life has been turned inside out, and this is the pits. In another frame, this is reconnect time with family. In another frame, this is a way for me <clears throat> to learn technology. In another frame, this is a way for me to get more you know more rest somehow. You know, we can we can reframe it, and then this is an ongoing process again. <clears throat> also, yeah, yeah. this is a time to yeah. Got another question coming in here. Yeah, yeah, um, and I think yeah, yeah. It kind of cut at the heart of a lot of things and and what a lot of people are yeah. feeling. But can you address survivor's guilt and how that is going to affect us? Mm. Yeah, it's a very good question. Do you mean? Uh, Literal survivor guilt or various forms of survivor guilt? Well, I'll, I'll answer my own question. I'm having some of that myself. I have um, in, uh, in the neighborhood, I live way, way uptown in Manhattan, and um, I live in a, in, a, in a Dominican neighborhood, and uh, we have lots of little restaurants in my neighborhood that I like to eat at and where I become friendly with the um, people who work there. And, you know, they're people that work in my local restaurants who are supporting children on their, um, on their, on their restaurant work. And um, they, uh, they, you know, they don't have work right now. And I went in Sunday night and had dinner at one of my favorite places. And, you know, we, we all said goodbye to each other. We don't know when we'll see each other again. And they don't know how they're going to support themselves. And I have some survivor guilt over that. You know, I'm feeling it myself. I, um, you know, I have clients. I have, I still have my work, and and I'm going to be okay. And my, my neighbors, so many of my neighbors are. I don't know if they're going to be okay, and I, and I and I, I, just, I feel awful about that. And you know, what I'm doing is I'm uh, some I'm in touch with, and you know, I've I've uh, people that I know. I've, I've offered to give them some money. And I've been making some donations where I can and, you know, and just trying to, you know, show kindness and, you know, where I can in my corner of the world. I'm trying to help people. Um, people are lonely. I'm trying to call, getting in touch with clients who I know are isolated, don't have a good social network, can't go to work. And so they're, they're without social support. I'm trying to give them more phone calls. I'm texting more people who... You know, I have a cousin who is retired and she doesn't have a lot of friends and I'm and um I'm checking in with her because I know she's lonely and I'm 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 sort of looking at at, at at what do I have that I can share. I can share my kindness, I can share some of my financial resources where I can, I can be in touch with people. And, and and that helps me because I have survival guilt also, you know, and I don't know what kind of other survival guilt I'm going to have. I don't know. You know, I have clients and friends who have compromised health. I don't know. You know, I don't know what's ahead for that. I, uh, what I'm doing now is doing everything I can to, to share my, my um, emotional and, and my other resources and trying to make my little corner of the world a better place. I'm in, you know, I'm trying to, 
in anticipation of what you know might what might be ahead. I'm, I'm encouraging people to follow the rules. I'm encouraging people to stay in touch with their doctors if they're symptomatic. Um, and you know, I'm educating people where I can and and uh, doing what I can now to um, you know to 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 be a a force for good. You know, I think that's how that. You know, I think that's the best we can do. I'm, I'm um, you know, it's a rough time. So I think that's a very good question. A lot of us are walking around with that right now. I'm encouraging clients and and some of the people I'm talking to, certainly my clients and my friends and family. I'm saying, you know, review, review your foundation. Review when you're feeling especially overwhelmed and lost and, oh, my gosh, and, you know, review your foundation, your coping skills, you know, the, 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 what you've been through in the past, what it's taught you about how to cope with difficult times. Review your support network. Stay in touch with your support network. Uh, the skills that you have, coping skills and working skills, skills that you have to, to – uh, Survive, cook, whatever you need to do. Um, you know, just review your foundation because it's it's it's, it's there. It's there, and, and you know, stay stay connected with that when you when you're feeling shaky. Just wait a second. I'm okay. I got people who care about me. People I who I'm helping. They're helping me. You know, I have a job, or I know how to get work when I'm when I need it. I whatever you have, and and you know, our government. I have to say, we don't know the details, but you know, our government is trying to step in too. And uh, the federal government, our local states, you know, our government is looking for ways to step in too. So we're not, you know, we're, we're not we're not unsupported. You know, working out, I know, you know, gyms are closed, at least they are where I am, but you know, where you can exercise, you know, if you can get more movement at home, I'm I'm a I'm a Fitbit person, so I'm trying to get my ten thousand steps and I you know, I, 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 I'm doing some running in place. I put on my gym shorts and run in place. And and um, it's, we have a warm day in New York today, so I'm, I've been going out. I'm going to get my 10,000 steps outside today. And, you know, as long as you're staying within, the, you know, I'm not a physician. As long as you're staying within the guidelines that your doctor's giving you, I, I can't give you medical advice, and staying within the guidelines of your local government in terms of what's safe and what's not, you know, try to get exercise. Get up and move, even if every hour you get up and try to move for 10 or 15 minutes. You know, keep moving. Just keep, you know, being sedentary can, can uh, you know, really, really has an impact on your emotions. So, you know, keep those positive hormones flowing. Keep, keep moving. Also take breaks. And I talked to a client today who um, is at home. She's working at home. Her husband's working at home. And... Um, and you know, speaking of survival, survival guilt, she, you know, she, she said, you know, my husband and I only have so much money, and we have to um, save money, and we, so we had to take our child out of daycare. And she said, um, you know, and we're going to be home, so we, you know, this is economically responsible. And she said, you know, she said, I said goodbye to my day, daycare provider, and she said we both. We both broke down and cried and hugged each other because, you know, she said, I don't know what she's going to do, uh, you know, with without my child and the other five or six children she has or whatever. You know, she said, I don't know what she's going to do. And, you know, again, this is what I think we're all walking around with. And, you know, it's just it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard for me to sit with. It's hard for you to sit with. I know. But she talked about taking breaks and, you know, she has a couple of, uh, calming apps that she listens to a calming app for five minutes, uh, you know, calm.com or one of those and, and, um, and, you know, gets up and takes a walk or, or, you know, she, she goes outside for a few minutes while her husband watches their child and they take turns and just things to give herself a little break because, or call a friend. And she says, you know, she recognizes that, that she has to care for the caregiver during this time. She's got to be her best to be her to best for her child. And also vent. You know, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've done some venting with friends. Called my brother and did some venting with him about how miserably unhappy I feel some days when I'm stuck in my apartment and worried about other people, worried about him, worried about his kids. And, and, and uh, my, my nieces and nephews, I have a great... Uh, 
nephew now, and and uh, and I'm, I'm I'm worried about all of them, and a few of them, my great nieces also, and I'm worried about them, and just letting it out, you know, frustration, just letting it out, and don't sit around think you have to think positive. If you want to vent, vent, let it out. They're they're just feelings, you know, let them out. It's, uh, we're living a lot of frustration right now. But let's talk about strengthening your your coping muscles. So let's. Uh, Talk about building some muscles also. Again, um, you know, Eric, thanks for jumping in with the questions. If you have more questions, you know, ask the question too. This is a good time for that. Again, make yourself a, a priority. And I'm especially saying this to parents um, because this is a, an important time to, to make yourself a, a priority. And again, as some of my clients that I've been talking about, um, you know, make sure that you're eating healthy. Make sure you're getting little breaks for yourself. Uh, if, if, you, if you have, uh, you know, a, a friend or a relative or if you have a partner, a, a husband, wife, um, you know, if you can take turns with some of the child care, just so you get some breaks for yourself. And what, what, I, what I would say is that it's not only – the physical work that you're doing right now. It's not only the housework, the child care, uh, keeping up in your job. It's not only that, but it's also just the emotional toll that this has taken on you. I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm going to self-disclose here. I've had a few mornings where I just didn't want to get out of bed. Um, you know, a couple of days ago, I, I normally get up at 6.15, because I, I live way uptown. I have an hour and 15-minute commute to the World Trade Center where I work for the day. And um, I just, you know, I didn't have to get up until 7.30 because I didn't have to make that commute. And I got up and, and, and I woke, my alarm went off. I set two alarms. Uh, I had my alarm and Alexa woke me up also. And I just didn't want to get out of bed. I just thought, you know, I, I, I don't have my friendly co-workers to look forward to. I, you know, I just, uh, I don't want to get out of bed. I just wanted to lay there. And I was fine. I had, you know, seven hours of sleep. I had plenty of sleep. This was not physical. But it was just the emotional exhaustion of, I just don't want to face this. I don't like the change. I don't like the isolation. I don't like I miss my coworkers. I don't like my life some days. <laughs> and, um, you know, I said to myself, get it together. You know, there are people who need you. You got to get out of bed and get going and, um, and do what you need to do to take care of yourself. You know, I got up and I slurped down some coffee and, and made some oatmeal and got, and, you know, got into the shower and just got the day started. And then I was fine. You know, and I, uh, I I had a little half an hour break, so it was a warmish day, not too bad. So I put on my jacket. I took a 20-minute walk in my neighborhood, which we're still allowed to do, and um, got back. And I, you know, I said, I, you know, I made myself a priority. Took care of the, you know, had a little food and got the day started. Made myself a priority, and I hope that you're doing that also. I, you know, I'm spending hours on the phone supporting people, and I. You know, I have to take care of myself in there so I know what I need to do. You know, I need to, I need to get out to get fresh air. And, and so whatever it is you need to do to make yourself a priority, uh, you know, I had on an earlier slide, don't, you know, don't try to be a hero. This is a time to, to let yourself be, you know, be needy also. So Here's Jerry, a good one. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, please. Just speaking of, of kind of putting yourself first, got a question. Um, how can I tell my friends about them not taking it more seriously like I am? I don't want people to visit if they've not been careful about social distancing. Some people don't seem to care about spreading the virus. Yeah, I, uh, I, I have heard some of those stories. You know, what, what, I, what I say is I think anything that you say out of love and concern at least has the potential to be heard. And so I have said to people, you know, I'm concerned about you. Um, you know, I'm concerned about you going into that situation because the guidelines are telling me that we shouldn't be doing that. So I'm concerned about you. And so I'm, I'm, I'm using the, the I'm concerned about you line 
to help people just say, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Here's the information I'm getting. Here's what I'm hearing from CDC, um, from, you know, from the, the governor of New York. So, I, you know, I just wish you would think about that. And then say, if you, or say, you know, I'm sorry, I, I'm just, I, I'm really trying to strictly follow the guidelines, you know, for better or worse, I'm trying to follow them. So, you know, I just have to ask you, you know, I can't ask you to come over right now. I can't ask you to, to all of you to come over. You know, we can't, you know, I have to bow out of this. And, and, you know, we have to put ourselves first and uh, hope that people can hear that and hope that they can learn from, you know, from, from your experience, um, which I think, you know, I think this is follows up to what my next slide, which, uh, which is saying, I say, I can't, I'm not in control of this, but we have to accept them that, that, you know, we're, what we do have control of is following the guidelines, and that's, you know, what I'm trying to do. That much I can control. Again, take care of yourself, as we talked about, eat, sleep. And, you know, I'm, I'm also a big fan of the 80-20 of the rule. And, and that is, get, let's get this 80% right and recognize, again, that we can't be heroes. Um, part of that 80% is making sure you're taking good care of your kids, uh, making sure you're watching out for their health, all the things that you do, plus the additional responsibility that this uh, uh, pandemic has thrown into our laps. But recognize, you know, if the house is a, is a you know, is a little disheveled, if we, you know, if, if um, you know, if we sleep, if we sleep in late, if we're, you know, being a little lazy about something that we can be lazy about, you know, we let's get it, let's get 80% right and not, uh, you know, recognize we have new responsibilities. Let's focus on keeping the in the 80% the stuff we need to do to protect ourselves and to make sure we're okay and our families are okay. But you know, again, go a little easier on ourselves. So I think this is the time for you know for flexibility. And you, know, I love my routine. I have certain things I do, and that, that just keep me centered. And I've had to be flexible again. My routine that even that 6:15 wake up call I I enjoy because I enjoy what it leads to and just recognize, you know we have to be flexible. This is the time to, and to, and this I think this is giving you a good lesson for me, maybe for you, for your families, for kids that you know we're going to be a little more flexible. The the routines that we have like going out for pizza on Friday night, you know we're not going to be able to do. We're going to make pizza at home. We're going to learn how to make pizza together. You know, Chuck E. Cheese isn't going to happen or whatever. I don't know if the Chuck E. Cheese is still open, but anyway, whatever you have, your pizza hangout, I used to like it, um, whatever is your pizza hangout on Friday night, whatever, you know, maybe you can't do, let's replace it. We're going to find some new, uh, you know, some new routines. Uh, and some of the, you know, I think part of the flexibility for kids and families is also postponements, cancellations of birthday parties and family events and weddings and things that are coming up. And again, you know, learning how to be flexible and, and uh, you know, to recognize life doesn't go as we, as we plan sometimes. Good lesson for all of us. Get support. And that's, you know, I think this is a time to step back and say, what is your support network like? I think three or four or five or six times a day I'm saying to a client, What's your support network network like? Uh, do you have people you can call? Is there somebody you need to reconnect with? Is there a friend or a family member who needs support from you? And this is really a time to be in touch with other people. Maybe you can't see them in person. I talked to a client just a little while ago who's having some symptoms that she's a little scared about. And um, she called her doctor and um, her doctor said, you're not sick enough to come in. You're not sick enough to go to the hospital. So unless you're having severe trouble breathing, you really have to stay at home. You have to quarantine yourself. My nephew's going to do the same thing. You have to stay at home. You can't touch, be in touch with anything. You can't have human contact right now and you know, beyond your own family. People are dealing with that. So I'm saying, well, how do you get support then? Who can you call? You know, again, get on your phone, get on you know, FaceTime or whatever you have uh, and uh, WhatsApp and, you know, whatever, whatever you have at hand, get support, talk to people, offer support to other people, 
where human beings are not meant to be isolated. And that's why it's so hard for a lot of us. It's, we're not meant to be isolated. But fortunately, we're in the 21st century. <clears throat> and the 21st century is making it possible for us to, um, to not be so isolated. You know, I'm going to just go back for a second. I think part of support is also information. And, you know, flood the fear with facts. Get facts. And I, I mentioned earlier on the, uh, you know, the, the uh, CDC website. <clears throat> I would just say be careful. We love our friends. We love our family. But they don't always have the facts. And, you know, I got freaked out a couple of times by things friends told me that, that weren't real. They were things that they had heard about from people that they thought, you know, knew what, what they were talking about. And, and um, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm looking at one of the companies I work with is saying we're closed until March 31st. And I'm thinking, great, April 1st is this magical date when the world wakes up again. And I know that's not true. You know, and, and then I read the fine print. It said we will reevaluate again on March 31st. There were no promises. And, you know, so the schools around here are closed until April 20th. You know, we're all looking for what's that magic date where the world wakes up and gets back to normal. And, you know, we're, we're you know, again, we don't have control there. You know, we, we don't know what that magic date is. So we're hearing worst case scenarios, well, this could go on, whatever, whatever, or, or not, or whatever. Or, you know, we're hearing a lot of things. I would just say, again, stay focused on the reliable sources that we have, knowing that this is unfolding, and you know, stay, stay, stay informed. That's another way to, for, to feel supported is good information. Attitude of gratitude. This is, uh, I think, one of the magic keys to being a happier person. And I'm especially doing this now. Uh, every morning, I think about what I'm grateful for, and I have a little note in my bathroom, and it says grateful with a question mark. I remind myself when I'm brushing my teeth, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful that I have coffee. I'm grateful that it's sunny out and I can take a walk. I'm grateful that I got more sleep. You know, I'm grateful for a lot of things. I'm grateful for friends. I'm grateful for um, everybody I know who's okay right now. And, um, you know, and some of my friends are texting each other to, to keep each other accountable on being grateful. I think this is a time to work with yourself. And that means work with your mind to, have, to be more optimistic. And that's taking steps. What do I need to do to work with my mind? And being grateful is, is one of them. So think about, again, I'm kind of summarizing here. What can you, what can you do to reduce your daily stress? Take time for yourself. Let your house be a little messy if you need to. Uh, maybe get takeout if you still have takeout. We still have takeout where I am. I don't know how long that's going to last, but we still, and I'm trying to, where I can, um, to support local restaurants by getting some takeout because that's the way that I can help out. And some of the wait people are helping out with the takeout or delivery. And, I'm, you know, that's a, something I can do about my own survivor guilt even is, uh, you know, give myself a little treat here and there and get a snack from a you know, local restaurant or delivery as long as that's still available. Asking for help, asking for support, calling somebody up and just saying, do you, do you mind if I vent for 10 minutes, if I let you vent? You know, and just knowing, you know, what we have to say no to, which may be saying no to somebody who says, you know, uh, let's not worry about this, all this rules, you know, I'm going to have a little impromptu party and 15 or 20 people are going to come over and we're going to have a say heck to the um, isolation and have a nice party of 20 or whatever. And, you know, we're, we're, where I live, we're limited to groups of 10 and people are following that. And that might be you saying no. You know, my guidelines are saying I can't do that. I don't want to do that. So again, this is a time to say yes, but it's also time to, time to say no. So quick review, take a moment, think about your own resilience and what are your strengths and what do you need to work on and think about, you know, what do you, what do you need to do for yourself again to, to, to get through this? Again, support is, is really key. Good information, reliable information and support, I think are really important during, during this time. 
you know, and, and, and you know, and, and use it well if you do have to have to respond, you know, you know, respond. The, the flight or fight is going to be there. What I'm saying, it's there when you need it. So don't worry. You're not going to lull yourself, make yourself so relaxed that you're not going to react when you need to. Believe me, it's, it's still there. It's not going to go away. So again, get support, which I've said repeatedly. Watch out for your stress. If you feel physical stress, emotional stress, you know, monitor it and, and uh, you know, monitor your feelings of helplessness, uh, losing control, yelling, getting mad, um, you know, drinking a little too much. Watch out for yourself. Watch out for your friends, family, partner. You know, watch, watch out for your children. You know, take, take good care of yourself. Look, look where you can all take a break. And, again, where can you make this fun? All the little routines that you have, you know, can you – you know, kids love routines, so the routines that you can keep, hang on to them. But create some new ones, more family games, more family watching movies together. Um, you know, formula, for, fortunately, the streaming services, they're still working. And, um, you know, you can still uh, cook things together. Create some new rituals, you know. I think what I'm saying, for better or worse, we're never going to be the same after this. We're, uh, you know, as a country... As individuals, as families, we're, we're never, ever going to be the same, but we may not be the same in some, also in some very positive ways. We may learn some self-reliance, some new rituals that will, that, you know, that will surprise us. Reach out to a mental health professional also if, if, if you need to. A lot of us uh, are working. Um, I'm still taking new clients, and we're doing it over the phone. So, you know, we're still, as a mental health professional, we're, we're still in business. So again, eat carefully, eat, eat well, uh, get exercise where you can, get sleep, uh, get support, don't beat up on yourself, and, and you know, get as much, balance, as much balance as you can. Feel free to send me an email if you want to. Or I have a lot of articles on coping, a lot of articles on my website also. So I've kind of used that most of the time, but any, um, Eric, any other questions or anything you want me to, to, to mention, please? Okay, we've got um, one more question. Actually, two more questions. Let me let me pull sure. it up here really quickly. And for anybody who has a, a lingering <clears throat> question, please have uh, you know have have this be the time um, to, to ask it and to submit it in that question box. Um, one one question that just came up was, uh, what can we tell a child who is frightened by what they've what they've heard and overheard? No, that's a really good question. What I would tell a child is. is um, you know, I would explain that, that this is a, a, an illness that, that people are getting and that um, the government, a lot of very smart doctors, very smart doctors and, govern, and, and government, doctors all over the world are working on this and that they've given us a lot of um, ideas on how to take care of ourselves. And then I would go through, here's what the government has said. They have said that that you can't go to school for a while. Uh, they said that, that uh, maybe mommy or daddy can't go to work. They're saying that we have to be, uh, we can't go uh, to restaurants for right now or movies, that we have to learn how to be a, a tighter, more a closer family and do more things for each other, and that we're going to learn more information every day on, on what we can do to take care of ourselves and say mommy and daddy are watching that information and we're following all the rules and we're doing everything to, we can to make sure that we're going to be okay and, and we still have, uh, we're still in touch with our doctor if we need anything. And we're, you know, we're, a lot of smart people are, are, are watching over us and, and giving us good information and we're watching that together. We're going to work as a family to, to, to take care of each other. Perfect. Thank you. And, um, as a, a follow-up to an earlier question about survivor's guilt, um, the, the question asker uh, said he was thinking along the lines of, you know, what happens if, if we lose loved ones? Um, you know, how will how survivor's guilt feel like that? And, and I know that um, obviously this community has, you know, a, a history with survivor's guilt. Um, so yeah. I'm not sure where to start on that one. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I fear that myself, you know, I have, uh, 
friends, older friends and relatives, people I know who I know are um, in the higher risk group, you know, for, for being negative, you know, for neck being, I'll just say, being negatively um, affected by this. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you can me in fine. Oh, good, good. Okay, good. I have another, I have another call which I declined. Just want to make sure it didn't cut me off. You know, I, I just think we, I, I think it's inevitable that some of us may be living with that. And you know, I think, I think what we can do is to be really in touch with people we care about, that we can support them emotionally, and in other ways that they need us in any way we can. We can encourage people to take really good care of themselves encourage people to follow the guidelines and, and, and to just know that, you know, we, we, we hope that the people in our lives and the people that we don't know are, are going to be okay. And that if some people that we care about that we know don't make it, that, you know, we, we will have that, you know, we'll have that grieving process in front of us. And some of us, you know, we, we don't want to have to go through that, but some of us, we may have to walk with some grief after this, you know, depending on where this goes and how bad it does get. And if we do experience some of these worst possible scenarios, and, you know, I'm telling, I recognize that myself, that, you know, assuming that I'm okay, assuming I survived this, we, you know, we're all hopeful. <clears throat> and that what I, the control I do have now is to really be in touch with people and check in with people and encourage people to do everything they can to take care of themselves and recognize, you know, that I that I, I may have some grieving to do when, when this is all said and done. It's hard to sit with. Yeah, it's hard to sit with. Uh, more yeah. questions rolling in here, Gary. Um, I have elderly family members who rely on a news source that's downplayed what's happening, feeling stressed and feeling helpless, trying to convince them yeah. it's real. Um, and they need to take precautions. Any advice? Yeah, I would, um, you know, we can't force people to do what we, what they don't want to do. And people get, get, um, you know, they have certain routines and certain news sources they like, and then that's where they stay. What I, what I do is I would, um, encourage as much as possible. You know, why don't you check this one out too? I read, you know, this guy, or this, this person, um, uh, is, you know, there's, there's, um, uh, you know, there's a, a woman on this, has this show, and she's really smart, and she's a doctor. Go watch her show. Why don't you check it out? Or, you know, or if they're on the computer, send them a link. And we can encourage. I think when I think what is the problem is when you say, you know, those guys are idiots. Don't listen to them. Not a good idea. That, that just makes people more defensive. But just say, okay, that's interesting information. I'm also hearing this. And, uh, you know, this person, you know, she's been talking about, or she's from the CDC, or she had somebody on, or whatever. Why don't you check check out this program or this information? We can encourage, but we can't. You know, we can't force. It's all we can do. You know, and impart Great. the information. I also heard this. Have you thought about that? Hope for the best. It's frustrating. Hard to we'll, watch. we'll have time for for one last question here, Gary. Um, what's one last thing we can take forward? I think um, I think ex we all have to accept that we're in an, then uncertain times, and we just have to accept that the uncertainty is just part of our life right now, and that as the information is available, we're going to get it, and we'll get more guidelines as they become available. We have to try to be okay with that. We're not unsupported. We have very smart people uh, watching over this. Our government is on the case. Um, we have to be patient, recognize the information is coming. We have to be patient with ourselves, people around us who are struggling in their own way, uh, flexible, uh, stay informed. And, and I would just say really, uh, I, I'm, you know, to repeat this phrase, that we have to hunker down and just really wrap ourselves in the comfort of our families. And, and this is a time to really, to, 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 to really be with our families and, and take care of each other. We're going to get through this and we're going to get through it. It's just, we have some difficult times ahead and we're, we just have to accept we probably haven't reached the most difficult time yet. It's unfolding, but smart people are, are monitoring this and as they have information, we're getting it. 
the best we can do. And the final note here, we have a, a question being posed as a little bit of advice. Um, perhaps practice being mindful of saying I love you to people so that nothing is left unsaid. Yeah, you know, I thought about this after I answered the question about children. Children is give lots of hugs to your children and and say I love you. I, and we're we're in this together. And I use this term a lot. We're we're all in this together. Thank you. Well, Gary, thank you so much for that insightful presentation. Um, we will be closing the webinar as of now, um, but this presentation will be available through. Uh, recorded video through HFA's uh, Facebook page in the coming days. Um, please, if you have any questions, contact HFA at hfaprograms at hemophiliafed.org or uh, Gary at his website. So uh, thank you all for taking the time today. And, uh, thank you so much. Thank you very day. much. Everybody take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you.